Welcome, welcome. Ah, we back. We are here. Yes, 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 yes. I'm here with the ever so energetic Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? I'm Josh. We about to get to it. We are. We about to get to it. Right. So. so today we're going to discuss detachment. And detachment in relationships is what we're talking about, specifically when it's over. How do you not cry in the car? How do you get over, not cry, how do you get over the, this person? How do you get over the feelings of emptiness? How do you get over the feelings of loneliness? And I took a good amount of time and did some research because I am a big girl and I've been in plenty of relationships. So understanding what is healthy and what is unhealthy is very, very, very important. And being honest with yourself and deciding and determining that you're really gonna do this is very important. Because your first step is to determine and decide, this is done, I have to do this. And detachment is a way of loving somebody too, right? Because you don't wanna stay in a situation where you're hurting people or people are hurting you. You know, abusive situations, whether it's mentally, physically, against yourself, for yourself, with yourself, to yourself, yeah. you know? So I have my notes, my handy dandy notebook. So what is a plus for sure? Okay, so the first thing that I found, and I've watched several YouTube videos, I've watched several videos. I am going to butcher this lady's name, Ayana, Ayana. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. It's her, and it's another lady. Like she has like this really strong feature to her and spiky hair. They both do speaking. I cannot think of their names right now, and I'm going to butcher their names if I try. And then there's Deshaun Barber, who is one of my favorite favorite speakers and it's all about self awareness mm -hmm. self acknowledgement and being mindful with yourself and the first thing that you have to do the very first thing after you decide that you're going to detach yourself from, from a person is to cut all forms of communication can't do it huh huh <laughs> <laughs> what? What? you'll know when you get there you'll know you you will know can't you will stop, know. won't stop. Nah, you'll know. No social media, no phone calls. You gotta cut all of the communication out. If you gotta block them, you gotta block them. If you gotta do what you gotta do, but the communication has to stop. They need to not be prevalent in your life on a consistent basis. Thoughts. So this is after you're like a thousand percent sure, like you're done. Go to hell. Not hell, but just done. Wow. Well, I don't want none of my exes in hell, but I'm just, when I'm done, go away. Go away. But you're done, so, okay, so. You still love them, too. You could still love them, but you have to do what's best for your mental and physical well-being. First thing, no contact. Thoughts. How? Like, I'm block not, the phone number, block the social media. I'm not blocking nobody, I just won't hit them up. Oh, they're gonna hit you up. I don't have to answer. You don't have to. Are you gonna answer eventually? What's eventually? Depends. I mean, they're calling you every day, they're leaving you voicemails and text messages. Nah, no, no, voicemail, that's but crazy. they're gonna. That's crazy. No, nah. people um, leave voicemails only on my birthday. Like, no one, my mom don't even. Listen, catch this voicemail. I'm not listen to no voicemail. Either way. So you're not gonna block them. I'm not a big fan of blocking either, but you're not gonna block them. No. Not even you're gonna cut out social media? No. I'm just gonna avoid like here's the thing. You have to be able to look that person in the eye, right? Mm -hmm. And understand that you can't look at that. That's how I think about it. What you mean? Like, I understand, like, you're not going to deal with this individual. You've made a conscious effort to avoid them at all costs so mm -hmm. that you can move on quickly, right? Mm -hmm. That's the goal, to heal, right? Yeah. Like, deal with the pain in a different way. Yeah. So, for me, I, my approach, I should say, has been more so like, okay, I still follow this person's IG. Mm -hmm. I'm not 
checking their IG though. So I'm not gonna look at your story. I'm not gonna like your picture. I might stroll down memory lane, but I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna like anything. I'm not gonna, right? Like, it's like, it's like being at a museum. Okay. You can look, but don't touch. Hmm. So the aspect of blocking them uh, socially, it's not going to necessarily do anything for me because I know I'm still going to want to look at the art. But that's the idea, to stop looking at the art. No, the idea is to get over being well, able yeah, to yeah. see the to art. To see them, yeah. So I have to still be able to look at you at some point and not feel what I felt before. That's really what the goal is. Yeah, but not today. It, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not an easy thing to do. You can literally have calls and text messages coming your way and you can see them and be okay. I love you, I miss you, I'm sorry, please come home. Oh my God, remember this, remember that. Nah, I'm not saying, so I'm I not can't saying that. Cause that's, that. That's, that gets real tough. Cause <laughs> especially if you're in a certain space with a person, yeah. right? Like it's not, at some point you're gonna be, you're gonna cave in and be like, yeah, yeah. I love you too, you know. It, so you don't want to put yourself in that spot you if not. your intent is to actually slide. But yeah. from my perspective, I can hold off or avoid communication and then, you know, eventually be okay seeing the name and not, mm. you know what I'm saying? That's it's nice. not easy. That's nice. I can't do that. Because when my phone rings, if your name pops up, I'm smiling. If a text message comes through, I'm smiling. Do I feel like your stuff on social media? Nope. It is hard for me to unfollow somebody that I care about on social media. Yeah. Because I have access to see everything about you, right? I have to make myself unfollow your stories, unfollow you, and then I have to find something else to engage in so I don't think about going to check on you, right? Because then I'll notice that you're not liking my pictures or you're not liking my this or you're not liking my that. And I don't need to be judged by the idea behind social media, but let's act like we live in the 21st century. And this is what we do. This is what we do. Stop playing. We have access to each other. And for me, it's just, I have, I have to, everything has to go. It's hard for me to let everything go, though, but it has to go. Your pictures have to come out of my phone. Your number needs to be blocked. The deleting the number thing is tough. I haven't deleted it yet. It's tough. Because you, you got to know, like, yo, I might need to unblock you one of these days. And I would like to know who the hell this is. You're not going to pretend like I don't have your phone number even though I have it. Petty. But it's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm gonna be a better person tomorrow. Not tonight, but literally. I'll keep your number in my phone and not say a word. Like what? Yeah. I don't do it all the time. It's just when I really, really am feeling or I'm coming out of a relationship. But um, nah, I can't do that. I gotta, I have to cut everything. Everything has to go. The yeah. pictures gotta get put in a Google folder that says do not open. I have to change your name in my phone to do not answer. Like I have to do things like that. I just know that I'm looking at and be like, I'm not gonna answer that. Uh-uh. I need a reminder. Sometimes I even take like little memes that'll tell you about your worth or affirmations and I'll put them as your profile picture. So when you call, it shows up on the phone. I bullshit you not. I'm telling you about me. I'm telling you about me. Something has to remind me of not to fool with you because when you break up with somebody, it's funny how you always remember the great. Right? When the memories and things start to flood back, it's always the great. You don't hone in too much on the reason why, the facts over the feelings. No, you do sometimes. Sometimes. But for the most part, it's like, you know what? I remember when we danced to this song. I remember when we were in Jamaica doing this. Oh, my God. I remember when he laughed. Those are the kind of things that pop up. And it's like, this mother could just won't leave me alone. But it's you. It's your mind. And your mind is very powerful. So I have to have little things, little triggers to say, don't you do it. Okay. So your name is in my phone. It's do not answer. Trouble. With a CH, no R. Uh, all these little things, demon seed, the devil's son, Lucifer. <laughs> no, this I'm, is I'm, nuts. I'm dead ass. I'm serious. I'm so serious. So what else you learned from these movies? <laughs> I'm curious to like go down the rest of this Lucifer. little list. What's next on this little list? All right, so on the list, it next it says, It says that you need to, in my notes, you need distractions. 
You need to distract yourself. You need to not sit around in the house. Do not sit around trying to reminisce. You need to get up, get out, engage with new people, engage with different people. And one thing I read was saying that, um, wasn't in this, but it was saying that you're gonna come back home after those feelings of high from being out and being distracted and, and you're gonna hit the low. But you need to embrace it, that's part of it. So we'll just do both. You'll just embrace it, accept it, get a glass of wine, do whatever you need to do, go to sleep or whatever, but understand that that's part of your process. It's part of your process. You're gonna miss them because of comfortability, because of just, you're just used to them. Mm. That's it. Four. Distractions. For that, distractions are good. I do think when you engage with new people, different environments, that are more friendly. Mm -hmm. um, don't that that's definitely a good thing. Yeah. Definitely a good thing because it's going to help you kind of shift your focus for a bit, and you know um, you'll definitely be able to kind of see different things and learn something that will preoccupy your time. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a good look. It's it definitely is. a good look. But you got to be careful that you meet new people and then you start to either compare mm. or you start to try to fit that same, fit this new person in the box, that same box. Yeah. You have to. Because yeah. it'll, it could get real bad to, to where it's like, you're not even getting the experience you're supposed to get with this person because now you have them trying to live up to somebody else's. And that, I love that. The experience you're supposed to get with another person. I love that. That's dope. That's a good statement. The experience you're supposed to get with another person. Josh. Sex. Do not. I've read several things that said do not engage in sex. Huh? As a means to feel better about yourself. I've read several, <laughs> your face. I've read several different articles and I read a couple of books that definitely say avoid get having sex if you are still in a try in a caught in a emotional state with your past. It's not healthy for you because you're gonna start self loathing. You're gonna, you're a man. We, I have feelings. <laughs> I have feelings. I'm not saying you don't have feelings, but you know. Do not get into sexual entanglements with people because then they might start getting attached to you or attracted to you or want something that you can't give. And but so you have it, to tell it's, them. It's all kind of spirals. You do have to tell them. But there's all kind of spirals and additional pressures you put on yourself with having to go through that with other people. Unless you're just romping for the night and they know it's just a romp, which I still think is a bad idea because I know I'd go home feeling guilty like, Jesus Christ. Even if it was great, I would literally get home and just feel like, I know that's me. It could be the best sex in the world. I would honestly feel like trash. So, mind your Gucci. Booty cheeks tight. <coughs> ah, now, number three. Mm -hmm. Do not go back. Your mind is very tricky. There are situations that are going to come up. Facts. Facts over feelings. Keep that as your motto. Facts over feelings. Write it down. What is the reason why you're having the problem or brrr in the first place? Because your feelings are those of chemical reactions. Facts are actual tangible, quantifiable things. Hmm. <laughs> Go back <laughs> when you want to. If y'all are capable of actually conversing about what landed y'all here in the first place. Okay. That's if you're saving it, though. You're trying to save it. Yeah. So, you time goes by. You still love this person. Mm -hmm. You don't have any ill feelings towards them, no. despite whatever took place between y'all in the past. You feel how you feel. You can't help that. No. Right? You converse for a bit. You notice the temp kind of changed. What you supposed to do? I don't like this one bit. I'm just saying, what you supposed to do? Nothing. Cause look, y'all, you you see, you see, 
you see a person evolving in front of your eyes. You evolve your ass to like a power ranger. Involve empowering your ass to a therapist. Yeah. They all come together. They put I just, their uh, I'm saying, like. When it's dead, it's supposed to be dead. I'm not saying I don't believe. You know, I'm on my J Lo tip a lot of time. I'm not saying I don't believe that it's possible. But if it's something that just wasn't good for you, y'all, like, just bounce and follow the steps and save yourself. But if it's something that is great, that is good, it's just differences that's keeping you apart. It's just, you know, lack of understanding and that, like things that are solvable. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we're not, nobody's ready made for anybody else. Things that are solvable. Yeah. Like, yeah, fight through that. I'm all about fighting through that. But see, sometimes, you, sometimes. sometimes you gotta separate, though, because you need to reset for real. Like, it's like, it's like, a hard reset on a computer. Okay. Like, if the if you got a virus on your computer, it's contaminated. It's not gonna function the way it's supposed to. Okay. You gotta wipe all that shit out of there. You put load new software. You don't toss the computer away. I cannot with you. I'm but just I, saying. I love it. I love it, and I wish, I wish that's what it was. But I don't. I'm not saying it works in every case. I'm mm. not. I'm not. I'm not at all. Right. Because sometimes the arguments, the fuss and the fighting, the shit that drove y'all apart is bound to resurface, yeah. right? But at the same time, if certain things, like you said, have transpired that, that you really can maneuver through, yeah. uh, especially in your time apart, you've kind of figured out how to have conversations that once seemed to be tougher. Yeah. Um, you see things from different perspective now. You understand each other without arguing and bickering. Then you don't need to rush back into nothing, but you probably should approach it like it's a new computer yeah. with new software. That's true. Like I like that. That's that's pretty. Read. You gotta, and you can only take a little bit, right? Mm. You can only take about. 10% with you from the past into this new computer. Because okay. there's still 90% that needs to be relearned. You got to relearn it. You got to reprogram it. You got to put all new all new apps. You got to figure out how it's going to work. Does it work? Josh with the analogy. All right. I'm just saying. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. I like it. I like it. I do. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. So next it says... <sighs> prioritize yourself. So now that you're no longer sometimes taking the back seat, now that you're no longer having to involve another individual, now that it's just you, take the time to do little things for you, whether it's going to get your nails done, going to a spa day, create a routine, create a habit, a self-care routine, create something that you do that keeps you flowing and moving forward because you're going to get stuck in a place from time to time where you do reminisce. That's natural. But create a routine, stick to your routine day by day by day. Yeah. You said it perfectly, really. Mm -hmm. that love was, yourself. Love yourself. You definitely gotta love yourself. Put yourself first. Do things alone. Yes. Like that. You you gotta um you gotta do things by yourself sometime. And the more you do alone, the more familiar you become with yourself. I agree. Um, you'll notice soon that you can sit with your thoughts at dinner. You don't need to have a conversation with somebody. You don't need to feel lonely. Yeah. Right? You, I agree. You don't need to, to, to listen to music or listen to a, a podcast to get you through dinner. Right? Yeah. Like, that's like a... That's like somebody keeping you company while you, you know what I'm saying? But that time, you should really just spend by yourself. Like, spend it in, in just silence yes. if, if that's what you need. And believe it or not, that's a form of meditation. I do meditate. That's a form of meditation. So being able, somebody said once, how do you love yourself? Right? Like, I heard that as a question before. How do you love yourself? You know, you ever had those moments when you want to do something? Now you want to do something your friends and other people want to do something or something, anything, it doesn't matter what it is, something comes up 
and there's something that tells you that might not be the move. Listen to that something. That's part of prioritizing yourself. Whatever that something is that's telling you to take you out of it, listen to that, right? The thing you said about going on, you call it going on dates, but date yourself. Figure out how to sit at a bar or sit at the table. It is meditation. You don't need to do anything but just be comfortable with you. Learn how to understand you. Learn about your intrusive ass thoughts. That's mm -hmm. a term, a psychological term. Your intrusive thoughts are serious, right? And they're not even correct. They're not right. Your intrusive thoughts are just there just because it's like a hindsight or it's like a something else. But be present and true with you. So that's what it says. Loving yourself. And it says, get a reality check and talk to someone. I remember once we had the conversation about even in a relationship, everybody has to have somebody that's a sounding board for them. Somebody they can talk to mm -hmm. and say, hey, this is what's happening to you. There has to be somebody that's not judgmental and somebody that's going to be true to you. Right? So do a reality check with yourself. Write it down. Whatever it is you need to do, however it is you learn. If you're a visual like me, I write things down. And just look at it for what it is. Check yourself. Be true to yourself. And don't get mad at yourself. Don't feel and belittle yourself. Don't make yourself feel like, you know, how did I get myself into this? Or all the things that we say, don't truly dwell on that too much. Right? Accept the fact that it happened. It can happen to anybody. Nobody's too fly to get played. And it's just what it is. Any kind of heartbreak, any kind of pain, any kind of scamming, any of these things can happen to anybody. 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 So, I only agree with that part. Go ahead. And I say that because the self-inflicted wound where you had that time to sit think about the shit that you've done the shit that you caused mm -hmm. all the things that the domino effect of one particular action mm -hmm. right like you gotta own that yes so i know you know you're not supposed to beat yourself up right but there will be a point in the process where you sit and accept what you did there's gonna be a point in the process where you're gonna be feeling crazy about what you did because it's like, damn, how the hell, you know what I'm saying? But that's, that's- That's normal. Yeah, that's super normal. That's, I think it's healthy. It is, you have to be aware, self-awareness. Um, but I had, I had, so I had a conversation with one of my boys about stuff like this and he was like, just got to heal. He's like, forgive he's yourself. like, yeah, he's like, you got to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to understand what took place. You got to accept it and you got to move on. You just can't like, but the only thing that you can do differently is not operate in that same space the same way. Great advice. And that was your sounding board. Great advice. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but those are the major things that you can do. And every single one had the most in common was just like, I know you don't agree, but separating yourself and taking time with yourself were the two most important things. Like accepting the fact that you did do something, accepting that something happened to you or you caused something, but don't go to the place where you're swapping bodies out just to feel better. Don't go to the place where it's like, you know, you compartmentalize it and it's like, you know, well, well, <laughs> like don't do that. Like literally deal, 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 deal. Accept it, accept it and deal with it. Wrong or right, accept it and deal with it. And that's the healthy way to deal with your emotions when it comes to leaving or leaving someone. That's what the people said. That's what the internet and that's what Ayana and the lady with the spiky, strong cheekbone face said. And a couple other books on the internet. Research is great. Uh, I mean, Overall, I think it's sound advice. I definitely think it's sound advice. And to put it into real world terms, just sharing all my business tonight, real world terms, for me, um, not dealing with somebody. Like, you know, like, remember when the situation happened with Rihanna and Chris Brown, right? And then she ended up in court with him. And people dragged her for it for going to court with him, right? But she loved him. 
and whatever the dynamics of their relationship is, is what caused her to go to court with it, was what caused her to go where she needed to go. If she had nobody around, hypothetically, to tell her, like, yo, this is a bad look for your career, this is a bad look for you, da 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 da, -da. what are the odds she wouldn't have been with him right now? Like, you just, you never know, right? And I say that to say, like, when something happens, running back and going back and being back in those situations, it doesn't make you a fool. I am head, as we like to say. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily make you a complete fool just because nobody is too fly to go through anything. Nobody's too fly to experience or deal with anything. And I think a lot of these situations, they're intended to teach you or break you. So it's either you're gonna get broken and keep going through the same thing over again, not recognizing the same patterns of behavior, or it's going to teach you not only what you like in a person or in yourself, but how to deal and how to suss out shit. Good, you good. So, that whole Christian Riri thing, he cheers for her. Like, yes. he, he roots for her. I think that's super cool. It is. Um, it is. She definitely, she doesn't hate the man, according to, you know, I don't think the so. optics that I've no, seen I and, so. you know, things that I mean, I don't know their business. They were kids. They were 17, 18 year old yeah, kids. I don't know their business, but they've found a way to, you know, grow up, right? Mature mm -hmm. and be cool, right? Like, so not, you ain't got to be super fly, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, they both have their own lives going on right now. Yeah. But they've moved past that, right? But for some reason, there's a lot of folks that want to stay in that moment mm -hmm. of the 16, 17, 18 year old, you know what I'm saying, fiery love situation. People just want somebody to blame for something. That's what blows me. You know what's crazy to me, especially in the black community? Just period in general. You don't know for a fact your fucking uncle is touching his niece. That nigga ain't in jail though, is he? We all knew he was doing something to her when she was younger, but he's not in jail, though. Is he? And he's not gone. He ain't dead yet. Is he? Like, all of these things, and it's not, like, even meant to be a tit for that thing. It's, like, a morality thing. Like, we want to have this strong-ass moral compass about people we don't even know. How is that even okay? People you don't know. You have no clue about why people commit. Some of these, some of these young kids are killing themselves. You have no clue about why a man, why that man is putting his hands on a woman. You have no clue about why that person is gay. You don't know nothing about nothing about nobody. But your moral compass is so strong for a Bible that you don't read in a church you don't go to. How? How? You know, it's funny. I just randomly thought about this. Somebody that I actually thought I was into told me I was selfish. And I asked him, how? Your face looks like mine. And I asked him to explain it to me. How? He said, we're all selfish. He says, not just you. He said, we are all selfish. I was like, yeah, everybody's here to be used. Not to be used, but everybody's going to get used. It's just the extent of what, how you're being used, right? Right? I might need a ride. I'll call my friend. I just use my friend to get a ride. Concepts like that. Little everyday things. It's going to happen to us. But I text, asked him to explain to me when he said selfish. He said, because, and this is his perspective on a situation where he felt like, I didn't care enough about what he was going through. I just cared more about the fact that he disappeared and I thought he was dead. Didn't know where the man was for 24 hours. Now I'm just giving an example. It's not even 24 hours. I'm gonna just be excessive. Let's just say he was gone for 24 hours. I didn't know where he was. And as a woman, I was automatically concerned. Or a man, whatever. As a human, I was concerned. I had no contact with this person, no nothing. I was concerned. So right? how does that make you selfish? When we finally did talk and he explained it to me, I said, I'm gonna talk to you later. I'm gonna call you back. Give me a second. For me, right, I know I did that so I wouldn't be pissed off and show you that I was pissed off. I took a step back for myself to recollect and check on me before I said something to you that was irresponsible because I understood what you were saying. But to you, I missed the part where you are telling me you did that because you were feeling this way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've never thought about it that way before, but it makes sense. But even in that same breath, what I did was right and what he's saying is right at the same damn time. So he got mad. He didn't get mad. He just wanted me to understand why he saw the world the way he sees the world. I said, I've never thought about it that way before. So imagine how many people are running around with that kind of perspective about anything in life. Oh, there's a lot. And just, but see, the funny thing to me is 
it's so interesting to hear somebody's perspective on something because that you know after a few questions it should probably tell you what you need to know about that individual right like not not to say that you got all the details or all everything down pat but you're gonna get a decent outlook on the type of individual that you would be choosing to deal with yeah absolutely like <laughs> a, decent a decent outlook a decent outlook a decent outlook i agree a decent outlook until they switch but they could only switch they could only fake for so long true Represent like yeah the representative is yeah it's, it's 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 cool welcome right but you're gonna be here for a couple months maybe and then you're gonna look crazy yeah. And it's going to continue to happen where you look absolutely crazy. And then you don't have much to discuss after that. Right? Like you can just go about your business. I don't like that phase either. We go from being able to talk and have understanding to where it's like you need to go about your business. Well, just the, because the communication is just so shafty. I, I hate that, but it is what it is. But that's because in the situations, these individuals got what they wanted, got comfortable, and now they just don't feel like they have to mm. put forth the same sort of effort. And then they want to spin the block. There'll be no block. <coughs> I got your text message. I just don't care. I mean, I mean, I care. I just don't. I can't afford to care. So I just, I can't. But see, yeah, like if you if they spin in the block again with the understanding that. It don't gotta be today's price, Fat Joe. I, all I'm saying <laughs> is, you know what I'm saying? All I'm saying is, mm. if if they decide that they do want to spin the block and you are remotely thinking about entertaining it, like, something's gonna be different. That's all I'm saying. Something is definitely gonna be different. Something something's making you reconsider something's making you think about letting them spin the block because guess what you're gonna get what you want out of it too yeah so yeah, at that true. point mm -hmm. it, it, but it doesn't even matter mm -hmm. because that person was probably okay with being on the roster from the jump anyway and they came to get put on the roster they came to the tryout they came with the intent of getting on the team. We just want a team. We just want a jersey. Now they have feelings. So. They can leave their feelings on the bench. Because they ain't never going to play. Uh, it's just. Human beings are just complex, man. We just are. And to try to keep putting us in boxes is just dumb. Well. We complicate simple things. God. So tell me about it. That's like. Cha -cha. Yeah, like, th that's just really how it goes. Like, things really could be simple. Pick this or pick that. This comes with this. That, that comes, comes with, with that. that. People like to change their minds, though. People like People to... People are indecisive. I'm very indecisive. I am indecisive, but when it comes to mom, I am. Not really. I'll be indecisive in the relationships. I didn't want any food, but now your food got here. Your food look good. <laughs> That's the real. But I just, I wish we could get to a place where people would just pick a person, rock with that person, do whatever you want to do within the confines of your relationship, but just stick to your base. Like, do what you got to do to make your shit work and be happy. Life would be so much easier. Like, stop creating all these pseudo humans it's just disgusting sometimes i look at dudes and i'm really disgusted like this is the inside the outside is just like this but on the inside it just i know i'm not the only one that feels it you tell me you don't look at females sometimes i think like same shit different body no no God, because i here's, feel that way here's, same shit but, different body. but here's the thing here's the thing i don't invest enough thought in the fucks to give 
So I don't, it like, it don't phase me. I don't know because for me, like the way they run up on your girls, they be so tough. But it, the, here's the thing. If you don't really know the, if you, if you don't care about these people for real, that doesn't, none of that shit should matter. But I'm dating for a reason. But are you gonna date every dude that approaches you? No, but the ones that approach me, it's like sometimes it's like, ugh. And I try not to go in with that, right? Like I listen and I let them talk. And when it starts to sound just like really redundant and repetitive, it's like, whew, water. I need water. I mean, I need water now, it's dry. <laughs> I'm so serious. I'm so serious. I thought to myself about dating in the workplace. I'm like, fuck no. Hell no. Because you get to see people's professional side. You get to understand them a little bit more. It's like, uh-uh, no. I thought to myself, would I date my friend? Hell no. I have one particular person that I've known since I was 18. Met when we joined the army. Me and this dude are insanely well-matched. Insanely well-matched. We just have never been in a relationship. Never. Feel like you're missing out? Nope. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> but that's the thing, it's just and I used to think at one point, like maybe it's me, right? So go from all the phases of trying to leave something and to having to go through all of that and everything we just talked about, and to looking at you and thinking, yo, am I willing to possibly have to endure this for you? Let's try. Yeah, so I need water. Now nah, <laughs> I've I've taken that thought, right? And applied that to different women as I looked at them and was like, no, <laughs> no, hell no, no, <laughs> fuck no, <laughs> uh -uh, excuse me, sister, hell no, nah. it's just, ugh, it's crazy, hey, that don't, don't touch my elbow, get up, no, you know, like, I'm not do. I get it, I, so, I you know, it starts to it it, there, it gets to it got to a point where it, I'm not phased by so much, like it's just like, okay, like I'll do some dumb shit to entertain myself, oh. like, like put it like this. Let's say you, let's say at some point you wanted to get somebody on a roster, right? Y'all supposed to do something, they always flake. Fine. You go from, okay, that's fucked up, to, mm, it's expected. To now, humor me. Mm. Now you, you know it's not gonna happen. Yeah. So you just, hey, what you got? It ain't gonna happen any damn way. So you go about your day like you was gonna do in the first place. Yeah. Because you already know that's going to fall through. Because it's just not ever going to. You know what I'm saying? So, and and the, the thing, the funny part to me is like, people like walk around with this false sense of, you know, being compassionate. Oh, I'm such a nice person. No, you ain't. You're a fraud. <laughs> a speak fraud. On it. Please speak on it. I'm because... Listening. Because, like, you won't even say, you know, like, a lot of, so here, here's where the thought comes from. Mm -hmm. So now, like, I know that women say a lot of crazy things about dudes, yes. which is completely fine, right? Completely fine. But in the same breath, there need to be a comma there instead of a period. Because I agree. dudes could turn around and be like, you say all this about dudes, but you're not even a decent person. Like, because you turn around and do the same thing that you would, that you say that you hate dudes to do. Yeah. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna hit the nigga back. That's, that's saying they ain't been disrespectful to you. That's mm -hmm. just all you say. Yo, I, yo, just trying to, you know, want to grab a drink, go do something, you know, a little whatever, hookah, whatever, blah, blah, blah food whatever right but but you look you you look at your phone and be like mm. Mm. Yeah. maybe tomorrow yeah. you know what i'm saying knowing damn well tomorrow's never gonna go okay. like even make you a bad person 
No, but you aren't even being decent because you aren't giving the same thing that you wanted, which is, hey, my nigga, it ain't gonna happen. We do do that to one another. We do, we do, we do, we do. Yeah, so why is, so my thing is, why is it acceptable for women? It's not. But. To friends on you, it's not. The world sees it as it's, it's, it's acceptable, right? Like for some reason, there's a justification for just constantly flaking. More flakes than dandruff. But why is it acceptable for a man to sleep with you and then flake on you after? Oh, that's never acceptable. Oh. Never. And neither is that. Yeah, because how's he even going to get to sleep with you if you flaking first? Like, how is that? Not first, not first. A dude to meet you, sleep with you, tell you all these kind of things, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, but see, the, then, the, the, I, we're not even talking about that type of dude because that's that's a that's a minister society. Like he's selling shit. He is selling. He's gonna sell. He's going for Christmas. He bought you a fake new. That's what he did. <laughs> I don't. I don't I'm, not, I'm, I'm just saying. Praise God. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. The man that shows up with the nice coach bag. You know that shit. You know what I'm saying? More times than not, he spent his hard earned money on that bag. Mm -hmm. And he actually liked that bag, and he hoped to God that you liked it too. Because it was for his mother originally. Anywho, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 nope. That was yeah. his mother's bag. Oh my God. Give it to you instead. Mm, mom don't wear bags. Mom does wear coach. <laughs> Mom's like coach. <laughs> but I do understand what you're saying, and we do do that shitty thing. But we, we do all kinds of shitty things to one another. It's just, I think I'm tired. There it is. I'm exhausted. I am too. I've had enough. And I'll probably get back in the ring eventually, you know, start knocking it out again. But in the meantime, in between time, you know what's wild? Let me tell you what's the wildest shit. Me and my girlfriend just had this conversation. Do not come for me. Men outside of America, Grade A. Grade A. Bravo. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is. It could be Trinidadian men. It could be Lucian men. It could be, I almost said Jamaican men. It could, I'm just saying. Men, I travel to the Caribbean a lot. Men outside of America. And yes, it's very easy to say, oh, they're doing this for this, or they're doing this for that. But they genuine, they, their consistency is insane to me. It's lovable. It's amazing. Consistent. Do not tell me they're doing it for a green card. I don't want to hear it. Consistent. <laughs> but whatever their reasons are, that kind of treatment is so nice. It's so nice. We could say the same. <laughs> they're so nice. They're so, I love that. And Hispanic men, I don't know about other chocolate sisters out there, but Hispanic men love my chocolatey ass. What? They love, love, and having lots. Listen, they love. I don't know what they're saying to me in Spanish. You might want to Google Translate in real time because it's I just probably. Ask, I, just ask. I speak a little bit of Spanish, so I just ask what I don't know, but love my chocolate ass. Yes. Okay? Love. Okay. I mean. And it's always outside of the freaking. Country. I went to Orlando last week and the week before last. It's mad the men kids in Orlando. They look black. There's a whole pack of them. And we went out dancing. And when they start talking to me, it's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, bro. It's nice guys out here. I think it's just, I don't doubt that a lot of these dudes are very genuinely nice dudes, but the, the, the way they, they spread their um seeds but then you want to hold on to somebody who do you like why are you trying to hold on to somebody what seeds food? like seeds from your gonads schmegma schmegma you have to get that out every now and then yeah but i had another guy tell me that he was like well, women keep thinking that we just want to run around cheating but a man when his gonads get full i just like the word gonads when his gonads get full he has to release it and he has to release it right away. And then you see something and you're attracted to something and you just let it go. 
Well, shut up. Go home. He probably home. did. He meant it. He meant every word he was saying. I've heard so many men say that too. Like, we're not cheating on you because we want to cheat. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? She ain't nobody. Yeah, but see, those people are trying to justify. Cheat. Yeah. But they like, Which you nobody. can't. She ain't nobody. We could all just go back to living, you know, the way we lived over a thousand years ago where it's like one man and six women in the house. and You know, that way. Wow. I was joking. I'm, I'm just, okay. You got it. You dropped the water bottle. Like, that That made you happy. No, the water, there's coincidence. The water fell, it, you know, it's an inopportune time. How many time. wives did Moses have? How many wives did Abraham have? Hmm. Noah had one woman because he went crazy after the ark. Boy, being like. I mean, he cooked to everything on that boat. He was struggling. He was hiding swimming under the boat. God, don't strike me down. But the thing of it is, though, right? Like, I think, and I'm saying this because I truly feel this way. Maybe I'll change in the future. Who knows? I just want to know. I want to know what I'm walking into. I want to be able to have a choice at all times what I'm walking into. Right? You never fully know, though. But I want to. I want to. My last, we all do. my last situationship, I give him credit all day. I knew what I was walking into. All for it. There was no confusion. There was no nothing. It's only in the end where it got to like be a little bit tumultuous. But other than that, I knew what was good. And I liked the way that felt. I liked whenever I would show up, I was always sure. I was always aware. Like there was no nothing for me to be confused about. A lot of times you're, you're indecisive or uh, you're concerned about how to maneuver with a person. I didn't have none of that. It was just straight up, just this is what it is, et cetera, et cetera. And I always felt well taken care of. So I like that. And I always say, I'm never going to go back from being treated extremely well to being treated like, nah, sis, we're not doing that. The minute you start moving like, I'm out. I follow those steps and get the step in. The longer you stay, the harder it is to escape bondage servitude if you're enslaved emotional servitude mental servitude mental bondage and emotional servitude there it is it's tough sis run thoughts thought you was ride or die <laughs> you just i ain't a ride or die nothing you you just go ride clean about your life and it's gonna hurt don't listen to nothing i'm saying and thinking i'm og bobby johnson about my feelings i will cry you sound I like will. It. but <clears throat> you have to be tough for you you have to stand tough for you right you're gonna cry we're humans you're gonna cry the boogers and the snot and you're gonna lay in the bed and you're gonna watch he's just not that into you and all these movies and p.s i love you and what dreams may come this is one of my oh my god and wow. meet joe black you ever see meet joe black that shit. Oh. oh. You good? You ever seen the movie with Nicolas Cage and Meg Ryan where he was an angel? He gave up his wings to come to Earth and the next day she got killed. He was stuck on Earth by himself. Boy, wasted. See? <laughs> that right there. An indication. I saw that when I was a kid. I never forgot that movie. Wasted uh, angel life. He gave up his angel life to come down to Earth to be with her and then she got killed. She wasted his time. Damn. See that? She was dead and he was on earth. She wasted his time. I might be remembering that. You know what was a really good one? We're not really talking about movies. It's a movie called What Dreams May Come. Oh my God. Robin Williams was one of my favorite when I was a kid. You ever seen it? Mm -mm. Watch that freaking movie. That man went to hell to find his wife. She committed suicide. Why do y'all do these things? Let me say something about that, okay? A woman would drink, would take some pills. This is not to make this lightly of suicide, right? Call the suicide prevention line, and I don't know the number, but find it. For real. A woman will take pills. We'll, you know, slip into the bathtub. We'll go smooth. But a man will blow his fucking brains out. Jump off the Eiffel Tower. We kill ourselves very, very differently. Men are violent when it comes to taking their own life. But women, look it up. Google it. I'm a research fanatic. Look it up. I don't know why y'all do that. I don't know why y'all so violent with yourselves. That's pretty dark. It is. On that note.
because I'm going all the way left right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to leave you on a better note. I mean, damn. I'm going left. All the way left. Oh, my goodness. Yo, we going to go before she get into the <laughs> cremation and how, you know, to start a morgue business. Child, Yo. how not to have a $10,000 funeral. <laughs> Yo, thank y'all for listening. We going to get we gonna get with the lady so that Tuesday can get her mind right. You know, we out of here, y'all. Peace.